You've reached Monster 911, and I'm Lance Hightower. I've been taking cryptid emergency calls for over five years. If you have a cryptid emergency, please call our toll-free number, 866-306-8085. I can help you. What's your emergency? I hope you guys are having a great week out there. It's so good to be with you once again. I'm Lance Hightower, outdoorsman, survivalist, tracker, hunter, cryptid therapist, and in-the-field investigator, and your host for another episode of Monster 911. Thank you for tuning in, and if you're not a subscriber yet, then please hit that subscribe button right now, because you're never, I repeat, you're never going to want to miss any of my episodes, guys. Trust me. Before we move on to this next show, some of you listening right now had an encounter last night or a sighting. That's right, last night. And many of you, though, had encounters and sightings years ago, months ago, maybe even weeks ago. But you just are not sure about sharing because you're afraid of ridicule or embarrassment. Well, I'm here to tell you I've had my own experiences. I've been ridiculed and embarrassed. So I understand where you're coming from and your thoughts. So I get it and I totally understand. But you don't want to keep it bottled up, guys. You want to tell someone. And why not tell someone that's had their own experiences, like myself? I've listened to thousands of people retell their story. And some of these people I've given really good sound advice to help them. Call me at 1-866-306-8085. Your report will be taken serious and your name will be kept confidential, I promise. So let's see here. Some of the things we've been doing, I've been doing a lot of interviewing online, a lot of call-ins from the toll-free number. It is amazing, guy. guys, just what I've been hearing. It's really, when I reveal these shows to you, they're going to knock your psychological socks off. Also, some of you have been going to our website um, and going to the store, looking at the shirts. I appreciate that. Also, they're going to make great gifts. We've got some great merch coming, and you can go to our uh, website store at www.monster911.com and grab your shirts there. Also, we're on Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Also, we're going to be releasing a multi-series of exclusive shows, five series with a show released each day. So we'll let you know on that, guys. It's coming. Um... I think I've uh, mentioned in previous episodes about this. So this will be really cool. We've never done this before. So let's get on to today's show here. This show is another from the series of the Lost Audio Recordings, which we've uncovered and are now uploaded for our Monster 911 listeners. This particular interview has to be one of the best encounter interviews that I've really had the privilege to do, guys. I have aired this story before, but this guest and I have spoken again, and I wanted you to listen to this encounter uh, again, since there are so many, so many details that this guest describes after going over the story with me. As you'll listen to this show, place yourself in his shoes, the terror in his voice, and terrifying events that unfolded, and what he finally saw are unimaginable. Just remember, always stay safe out there and always stay alert, guys try to protect everybody as best as I can, so, uh, but yeah. I sincerely appreciate that, sir. Lance, you don't have to worry about protecting me. I can protect myself. Okay. And I'm not worried about anything like that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sick of it. Okay. Uh, not that I broadcast this, I don't, but I'm at a point now, I don't care. So that's going to happen to me. Okay. No. I will. Well, First, I would like to say, your site is the best 10 bucks a month I ever spent. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I, yeah. It really means a lot. I, uh, excuse me if sometimes I have to pause for a moment because my heart races and I'm shaking inside. No, no problem. I totally respect that and... Just feel free to speak frankly, uh, freely, and that we're in no hurry. I've got all night. Okay. All right, look. Uh, I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I'm a hardened Marine. Uh, I, when I come out of the Marine Corps, it was about a year and a half, and I bought this piece of property on top of a mountain, which is about 20 minutes away from Scranton, which supposedly Biden come from, that communist bastard. And uh, I live in 
Springbrook Township, the borough of Moscow, Pennsylvania. Okay. And I, I want everybody to know everything. Okay. I got no hidden secrets. So when I was in law enforcement, Lance, I couldn't tell anybody anything because of my job. Now, uh, uh, okay. Oh, boy, oh, boy. When I, when I bought this property at the top of the mountain, I, oh, this is getting weird already. That's okay. Uh, Just take your time. Take your time. We're in no hurry. Okay. So, my wife worked at an Army Depot. And before she came home, it was before dark. And she says to me, the bears are taking the garbage out of your truck. Now it's dark. So I go out there with my flashlight and garbage bags ready to pick up the mess. And there's nothing there. And I said, this, this, this can't, it, it just can't be. I go back in the house with the garbage bags. And I told her, I said, that, that's not bears. Because, and I got a, I had a big high uh, truck, which you always have. And uh, I said, no, because if that was bears, there'd be garbage all over the place. They were picked up. By something I, I, I didn't know I it just it baffled me so uh, I wasn't up in a mountain a very short period of time and the screaming is coming down from the mountain it sounded like a woman being slaughtered and my wife at the time says do you hear that I said, yeah, it was, it wasn't a scream that you would hear a woman scream. This lasted like minutes and minutes continuously. So I go up, my doors on the back deck, and I'm listening to this thing screaming. And this went on for the longest time. As soon as it got dark, and I'm I think, I don't know what the hell it is. I, uh, uh, when I come out of Marine Corps, Lance, uh, they had me in these different freaking places, which is heat, which I hate. And uh, uh, I didn't know what to think. So I was thinking to the fact, and I only got one station on television at the time and, uh, for 10 years before the big dishes came out. Right. So I didn't watch it. She watched her soap operas. I didn't, I didn't care about that, right? Then, uh, this was, I'd say, almost a year or better that the screaming that we heard. And, uh, oh my God, this is freaking hard. Uh, so, I live, there's a railroad bed in back of my house with no tracks. It's an old railroad bed. And it went for miles. So anyway, let me back up a second. Uh, we had a lot of bears up there, big bears, swamp bears. And the, the one guy... I knew shot one over 700 pounds. He got lucky, he got a swamp bear. They usually die of old age in those swamps. And they lay on the bogs to get the heat from the swamps. That's why nobody gets them. But this guy got one. So I did a drive through that swamp only once. And I come out with all shredded clothes, my coat, everything. I never did, a, did that again. But, uh... Oh my God, hold on. Okay. So, about a mile down that railroad bed, I, I didn't hear the screaming from the mountain for a while. So about a mile down that railroad bed, I hearing the scream 
like a woman being slaughtered. It, it, and that's when I started carrying the weapon because I didn't know what the hell it was. So uh, it would scream at me about 50 yards before the opening to a valley on the right. It would scream at me until I left that area entirely. Now, when I went into the valley for bear season, or hunting season for deer, it just screamed, but then it stopped. Because they went into the valley. Now, let me back up again, if I may. Sure. I uh, uh, go across the road with my 308, and we got three dams up there in Moscow. So, I didn't know why at the time. I mean, there's every everything there. So, uh, the leaves are off the tree just for bear season. I'm scouting for, you know, bear season. And I looked to my right. Oh, my God, this is freaking weird. Uh, I see five bears. Now, I'm out of the Marine Corps about a year and a half, and I was away for years. Mm-hmm. I never he- heard of anything about these friggin' things, ever. So I look to my right, and I see five bears. And uh, one was standing up. Two was two was on its fours, and two were pushing each other. And I, I. Five bears. So I, I, I continue to the dam. And by the time they come back, they were gone. I thought there were five bears. Now I know different. Uh, but it took some time to realize what the What's going on? All right. All right. Oh, my God. This is hard. Just take your time. Take your Every time. Okay. Now, January comes. I love the cold weather of Pennsylvania because I hated that friggin' heat that Marine Corps put me through all the years. I, after this... The deer seasons are over. There's a mountain in back of me. And I take my 308. It took me about 45, 45 minutes to climb that part of the mountain in back of me. And I come to a level spot. And I see this big hole in a, a big ridge. It was shale, all shale. It was dug out. But there was no trail. There was nothing. So I'm looking at it. <laughs> it was like a, a steam radiator, a steam radiator going off in two spots inside that hole. Like, hoof, hoof, hoof. I'm looking at this about 15 feet up. And I'm thinking, what the hell? How the hell did they get in there? How did, how did, they weren't bears. I knew that. Right. How did, how did they get in there? The only way to get in there was from the top. So I took my 308 off the safe. And I backed off slow. From my military training, I just backed off slow. Waiting, for, I didn't want them two damn things to come out charging me. Right. And I backed out till I hit the edge of that mountain, and I went down to my house, and I cracked a couple beers, and I'm thinking, "What the hell is?" So, so a while went by, and I I just put it out of my mind because that shit'll drive you freaking crazy. Sure. But if you gotta stop, you stop. You please and ask me any question you want. Yeah. So, I. So I put it out of my mind. 
So, continuing the process with my hikes. See, I hiked and hunted. I still had my marine, my marine physique for like 30 years. Because I hiked and I hunted in mountains. For, but the mountain in back of me, I couldn't get up. There was no access to it at all. Because of the swamps on the top. And it was just pristine land. So, I'm walking by this, and I think it's still screaming at me, but every time I walked into it with my weapon, it stopped. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, oh, oh this is weird. Okay. So, I used to t- stop my vehicle when I got off of my shift, and I would walk. In my uniform, in my sidearm, I, I, I would, wouldn't even bother to change my clothes because that path I was on right off the road, I started getting peace and tranquility. Like, from arresting these bastards and arraigning them, I needed an escape. Right. Okay. Now, I walk in there. Uh, after about maybe a month, maybe longer, and every s- step I took, Lance, I hear crash, crash. And I'm thinking, what the? What is this? I thought it was somebody screwing around with me. And when I stopped, it stopped. But I couldn't see it, whatever it was. It, it, it was just. So finally, I had enough of this. I thought it was just some jerk screwing around with me. So I take out my magnum, and I said, if you don't stop screwing around with me, I'm going to blow your freaking head off. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't shoot at anything I couldn't see. Right. I just thought it was a jerk. So I start walking, and it would crash crash all the way to the railroad bed with, which must have been 200 yards so it, it would veer out to the right where that railroad bed is about a mile from my house okay uh oh wait a minute I still be naive to the fact not knowing anything. So, in the late 90s, uh, this logging company came in. It, where the path ended, it put a big logging road in, and it was straight up, which I loved because got my exercise it was there timbering logs on the other mountain that I told you about for like two years hmm. with all these logging roads mm-hmm. hold on a second I got a lot of freaking cigarette yeah go ahead go ahead oh. get a drink whatever you need yeah okay let me take a sip here yeah go right ahead we're in no hurry thank you you got a lot of patience uh, hold on So, since I was uh, still in my uniform, I wouldn't go home to change, which is only up the road. I figured, no, I want to take advantage of the daylight and everything, you know? Exactly. These loggers came to me, and there were two brothers. And they said, oh, these vandals are vandalizing our equipment. I said, First thing, as an officer, I'm going to say, is your fuel being siphoned? Because they had 50 gallon drums of fuel. Ah. And they said, no. I said, well, that, that doesn't make any sense. But I said, what do you mean they're being vandalized? He said, well, they're throwing these big boulders at our machines. I said, what do you mean, boulders? I said, I'll go check it out. So I went there, uh, I'm looking at their heavy equipment. I checked their 
fuel course is full. And these big dents, I mean, big dents, were just smashing his freaking machines. So I see them the next day and I said, hey, your fuel, is, your fuel is still there and there ain't no way vandals are going to pick up these freaking boulders. No way. Still, I'm naive to the fact because I don't know shit. Uh, so after two years, they were out of there. It cost them so much money to repair those machines, they came up there for five years. So they bailed out. Okay. Now, I'm going up that uh, very steep logging road, which I love because I started hiking it and then I started jogging it. Wow. And I felt great. So, uh, hold on a second. There's a big, a big tree stump. I used to sit on that because I'm at the top and I'd smoke a cigarette. Yeah, that was fine. This went on for a while. So the one time I went up to the top of the logging road, lads, I, I, I sat in that tree stump just for a break. I lit a cigarette and I heard a, a baby cry. I'm like a baby cry. I said, what? There's no, this is stupid. I gotta be freaking nuts or something. But it sounded just like the cry of a baby about... 50 yards away. Oh, wow. So, I lit another cigarette. I I got acorns thrown at me. They didn't hit me. They're in, they're in the upper branches of the, of the tree. I got bombarded with them, but none of them hit me. And I'm looking up in the tree, and I see this one acorn, and the velocity of this acorn was such that it went right through the leaf and it did knock it down. Holy cow. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm uh, totally freaking confused. I wasn't scared. So I got my 06 and my 45 on me at that time. So I decided to go into that little opening where I hear this baby cry and I look to my left where the loggers put their fill you know right and uh this big hole was dug out I I, I didn't go with it because it was freaky it was all black so I'm thinking what the hell would do that they need a bear but I didn't know I'm just like that earth hole I told you about. Okay. So I... I went back probably two miles and I was the only one up there because I lived there. Nobody was up there but me. If they wanted to come up hunting season, they could. But I never seen anybody up there. So I go about two miles in and there's this ledge and, uh, boy, this is freaky. Whew. And I, I walk on the ledge, and I see, like, these oak trees that are standing tall. Mm -hmm. And two trees implanted in the ground, like an X. And the roots are on the top. And I'm thinking, what the hell is this? And who the hell would want to do it? Oh. Uh, but it was all rotted. The oak trees were alive, but these things, if I could take a guess, looked like about 50 years old. Okay. So I continue about maybe 30 yards. I find another set, just like that. So now I'm getting shook up. I go back the other way, past the first set, about another, I don't know, 50 feet or whatever. There's another set. Oh, wow. With the roots in the air. Uh, I got freaked out. You know what I thought? What? No trespassing. Keep out. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. That That's... 
in weapons or not, I was gone. Uh, oh, Jesus creepers. Whew. Hold on a second, please. Sure, sure, sure. Oh. Oh, oh man. Yeah, just take your time. Look at that's so when I was in the Marine Corps. This was different than the Marine Corps. Totally different. Mm -hmm. It being as naive as I was at the time, because there was only one channel on television mm -hmm. until the big dishes came out, you know? Right. I didn't watch none of that stuff. I didn't have nothing about Bigfoot or Dogman or I, 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 I never heard of it. And, uh, what happened next? Oh, boy. Hold on a second, please. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, I gotta take a breath. Yep, just... Oh, shit, you, you, can take, you can take as long as you want. Okay. Uh, on the lower part of the mountain, you could drive in. Cross two creeks, you drive in. Mm-hmm. And I did that for years. But it, it, it was a beaver dam. You could see the beavers doing their thing, you know? But you never seen any beavers. i never seen any beavers in years. And I'm thinking, what the hell is the friggin' beavers? Uh, so I looked on my right. It, right off the beaver dam, this was. It looked like an igloo. But it was made of intertwined trees that were pulled down. So I got out of my truck, and I, I got to get a closer look at this because it was confusing. I got out of the truck, and I'm looking at it. It, it was... It, oh, man. It was limbs and branches that were pulled down, intertwined. It looked like an igloo. And I'm thinking to myself... Maybe the kids are back here making a fort. Right. But when I got a closer look at it, Lance, it was too perfect. Children couldn't have made that. See, it was a... It, what I realized later, it was a blind for these friggin' things to kill the friggin' beavers. That's why there weren't no many damn... There was no damn beavers. Oh. So, being ignorant to the fact again... You, there's pines in there and everything, and it was, I never seen any friggin' deer either. And that was the best county, one of the best counties in Pennsylvania for deer hunting. All of a sudden, the deer herd dried up, and I'm asking uh, some of my neighbors at that time, I had some, where's the deer? They said, we don't know. They're not there. Okay. Uh, where the hell was I though? You were talking about the igloo structures? Yeah. The igloo structure. It was only one. At that time, it was only one. Now, when I went back to the top of that mountain where the loggers timbered out, there's more of them. Now, this one particular time, I, I, I'm walking up there, and there's this all kinds of uh, thick shrubs, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh my God, this is freaking weird. I'm walking by it no more than 10 feet away. And I see these set of red eyes way down, almost on the ground, looking at me. Oh my gosh. And I, look, I, I looked at these red eyes, and the red eyes are following me as I'm walking away. But you know what? I was so scared, I just kept going. I didn't want to know what it was. And, uh, oh boy, this is a. Uh... All right, so right off the Macadam Road, on the mountain that I live, mm -hmm. I'm walking. 20 feet up off the edge of the road it is these big boulders there and I find all this pile of crap 
So I'm thinking, horses? Oh, it's got to be horses. There were piles and piles and piles. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. A horse don't crap that much. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, with these boulders, if a horse went through here, went through here, he'd break his friggin' leg. Right. And an owner wouldn't bring their horse here. It was, it was piles, piles. I mean, they were like, uh, oh my God, they were like so big and so wide. And I'm thinking, what the hell is, anyway, still being ignorant and naive. I, 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 oh, wait, well, hold up. Yep, take your time, take your time. All right. Take your time. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. There's this one dam right in the middle down where I live, and there's two other ones, too. So, I'm going to a basin. You can see the spillway. And there's a basin there. It is this big rock you can walk out onto. So, before I got to that rock, I hear a big splash. And these bears walk in it. They don't do a big splash because they won't get no fish. So that chickened me out. I went back the other damn way because uh, I just had enough of this. So, There's a, a creek with a little spillway right off the road. And I see these three brown trout. I'm not a fisherman, I'm a hunter. And I'm looking at these brown trout, and they were there all day. I mean, because I go back periodically, and they're still there with the water spilling on, on them, like 20 inch brown trout. So I said to myself, I'm going to go back to my house and get a net, which I had the net, and I had fishing poles, and I don't fish, like I said. I go back and get the net. I come back, and they were gone. You know, thinking, where the hell did they go? They were here all damn day. No. I don't know. But before I get to my encounter, i got to tell you a few more things, okay? Well, yes, sir. Go right ahead. All right. I used to stop in his bar because he had great food. And I'm sitting next to a guy I haven't seen in 30 years or more. He said, Tom, where are you living at? I told him, Aston Mountain in Springbrook Township. Aston Mountain? He said, you know my three cousins? And he was from Scranton. I said, no, I never heard of them before. He said, they moved out of Aston Mountain in 1988. I said, yeah. And we start talking about weird things. And I, and I told him just a little bit of my story, not much. And this guy was named, uh, I can't remember his name right now. But uh, he said, my three cousins live on the mountain you live, and they got out of there in 1988. I said, okay. He said, one is Las Vegas, two are in California. He said, I'm going to call them right now, put you on the phone with them. Of all the coincidences, which I don't believe in, I'm a spiritual person. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I went on, on that mountain. I used to pray there and thank God and pray and pray and pray because that's me as a Christian. It that gave me solace and peace. Now, he calls the one cousin in, in Vegas, and he puts me on the phone with him. He said, you tell him. I said, tell me what? He'll tell you. I said, okay. You, you, you want to tell me something about some weird whatever? He said, yeah. He said, my other cousin, California... And my other cousin, there was three cousins, and he was the fourth cousin, the guy sitting next to me at the bar. And he told me, 
Oh my God, I, I, I freaked out again. They're driving down that McAdam Road, there's a horseshoe turn and a bridge. He said this thing was in the, the water picking up rocks for grubs. I don't know what the hell, I'm just assuming. He said this thing came out of the water chasing us. I said, how fast are you going? He said, 30 miles an hour. It was keeping up with us. I said, wow, man. Oh. But he lived, they lived on that same mountain until 88. I said, well, tell me about it. He said, this damn thing had wings. Oh, it was just... Uh, like a... Like a... Uh, a Bigfoot. But it had wings. I said, wings? What? I freaked out all over again. Oh, my God. So I got, I got to talk to the second cousin in California on this guy's phone. He told me the same damn thing. But I never got to the third cousin. I guess he was working. I, I have no idea. But two out of three cousins told me the same damn thing. Oh, jeez. Now, this is only like a half a mile from my house. It, 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 I can see why they moved the hell out of there in 1988. I never knew them. I, I've been there basically all, since, since I got out of the Marine Corps. I never knew these. I never knew these guys. So, uh, uh, oh, hold on a second. Yep. I gotta. Yep. Just. Take a drink, take a smoke, whatever you got to do. We're in no hurry. I've got all night. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I... Okay, so... Uh, a period of years goes by. And, uh... big great bands. My male was 177 pounds. He was losing weight. So I, I take him to the vet. I put him on a saddle so it's computerized. And uh, he lost 10 pounds. I said, yeah, I, I knew he was losing weight. Well, he had a growth in his neck. He couldn't eat. And he hardly drank. That's why I knew he lost 10 pounds. And uh, my female, she was about 140 pounds. Yeah, she was okay. <clears throat> so, uh, I take him in the house, especially when it was cold, like, because they got fine fur, you can't leave them out there. And, uh, they would go totally friggin' crazy. I would, I trained those dogs myself. They were very disciplined. But, come the evening time, Totally, I, I never heard them so vicious. I, it, 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 my wife was telling me, calm them down, and she's yelling at them. They would listen to her, and they would listen to me. And so, this one day, I had them out in a commercial dog fence with their bag of dog foods, separate area, dog coop, and everything. And I was going to go out and get them. I said, well, I go and get them. And all of a sudden, they started ringing and growling and Working, they're hitting. I can hear them hitting the fence. Bang, bang. And she says to me, "Aren't you going to go out there?" I said, no, "Listen, if any harm would come to these dogs, I'll be the first one out there." And uh, oh, you're a marine. You won't go out there. I said, "Don't go out there." She, she took the flashlight. She went out those two back doors. Where the dog fence was, it, I said, okay, I grabbed my 45. I said, ah, I can't leave her out there. By the time I got to them two back doors, she come crashing through those two doors, Lance, and her eyes were as big as friggin' saucers, and she was white like a sheet. Oh, gosh. And I, I said, okay. Uh, I went out and got my dogs. I said, I don't want no harm coming, but I didn't see anything. So I said to her, I said, 
So I got the dogs in the house and they're going crazy again. I said, what'd you see? What did you see? And she didn't say a word. She went right into the bedroom and closed the door. So for weeks, I'm asking her, what did you see? She would tell me nothing. Nothing. Whether she had a, a, a psychological freaking uh, a situation. Right. But she never told me anything. Wow. Never a word ever since. So, I said, okay. Now I got to keep one eye on my dogs. I don't want this, whatever the hell it was, try to kill them. But you know how dogs cower? Yes. These two great Danes did not cower for a moment. Now, they weren't letting nobody get their dog food because they had to fit the pound bag in there. But I don't think that was it. I think these two great Danes did want no harm coming to us. Because a dog would naturally cower with these things from what I'm uh, hearing. And they're banging on that fence with their paws, and they're... It, it, I think that's what it was. They wouldn't let no harm come to their owners. Very, very likely. Yeah, even though I know dogs cower, because that's what I've been hearing, but not these two. Not these two. I mean, uh... So I, I, I brought him in the house most of the time after that. I let them out to go do their business. They'd sit by the wood burner and get nice and warm. But as soon as they heard something that they heard, I couldn't hear it. They went friggin' nuts and come up uh, the steps to the basement. They had a gate there like you put for a baby. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was okay for a while. All of a sudden, they crashed that friggin' gate down and went to those friggin' doors, screaming and hollering and growling. I said, well, she said to me, they never did that before. I said, no kidding. Anyway, she was very naive, but she was in, a, I think she was in a psychosis type of mode where she, well, she didn't want that in her mind. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, medically speaking, I don't know what you would call it, denial? It, she still wasn't saying anything to you? No, not a word, ever. Hmm. Ever. But she was white, like a sheet. Her eyes are bulging out of her head. I think she was that damn scared. So anyway, I had a lot of bears coming around. She said, you got to get rid of these damn bears. I can't go to work. Uh, they're on a porch. They're underneath the porch. They're all over the friggin' place. And I'm thinking, why the hell are the bears here? I mean, yeah, I mean, you see them, yeah, but not that many. So I used to walk, I used to have to walk her to the car with a flashlight because she left early in the morning. And she worked at the military base, army base. Uh, and she just kept leaning on me, get rid of these big bears. I said, how? I don't want to shoot them. How am I going to get rid of them? I think those, now that I think about it, I think those bears were so intimidated by these things. They came out my, at my house for freaking protection. That's the only thing I can come up with, Lance. So you, you, she was actually seeing the bears. She wasn't seeing, like, scat or anything or tracks, but she was seeing the bears. She was seeing the bears. They're on my two decks. They're underneath the decks. They're laying by our car. Yeah, I, I can't blame her for not uh, wanting to go to work. So I'd go out there. I had a gun, actually. I had a Magnum. But they weren't bothering nobody. I'd chase them away. And they'd go about 20, 30 feet and stop. they lay back down. I said, I, I don't know what to do with them. Call the game commission. Well, let me tell you something about Pennsylvania game wardens. They're liars. They cover up for whoever is telling them to do so. 
Because I used to do backup for these guys. And I'll never tell you the truth. In Pennsylvania, anyway. I don't know about Oklahoma. It's kind of the same here, too. There's oh. there's lots of... Uh, it, I think it depends who you talk to. I think... And now, I, I can't... When I say this, I can't fully substantiate this, but it, it appears that when you get someone just recently on the force, they tend to be more um, laid back, and but they're not even cooperative in telling you the truth regarding the uh, release of wolves here, or that there's oh. mountain lions in the area. No, there's no mountain lions. When there's mountain lions on game cameras all over here, and that there's wolves that have been released that are 150-pound wolves. No one will talk about it. So Why? Why? I think it's um, that I have been told by avid outdoorsmen who talk to these game wardens that do release a little bit of why they do this without people knowing is that they don't want any repercussions from certain organizations or groups uh, hey you're releasing these wild animals and they don't really want a lot of uh, pushback by farmers because the farmers have livestock and of course that's money and they rely on livestock to feed their family but also sell and you know that's an income to them and so they kind of do it secretively and they don't tell you where in the locations they release this. but So it's all kind of hush-hush kind of thing. How you find out about it is uh, I, I had a, you know someone telling you. I had a uh, local resident I just met a couple weeks ago that saw a pack of 30 wolves literally in front of his bumper cross the road. Wow. And they were about 150 pounds each and he wasn't getting out of the truck and he said there were black ones there were gray ones there were off white ones he said they were the biggest oh, canines he's ever seen he goes they were wolves and he said he said there's no way I could have survived had I been walking out in the woods hiking or getting off my tree stand Lance he right. said uh, I I a pack of 30 I, I and if they're after me you're toast so his uh, his son was in the truck with him and they just were uh, 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 totally taken by surprise and shocked what they saw and so but anyway that you know that's not supposed to exist if you talk to a game warden as well yeah. as uh, mountain lion oh there's no mountain lions well yeah there is uh, so I, it kind of makes sense why they don't want to talk about it. They don't want organizations in the uproar and they don't want farmers. So they just kind of do it and they go, ah, oh, it doesn't exist. So they don't want to be, I can see where they don't want to be the organization to be blamed by anything. So whether it falls underneath a liability issue, uh, that's kind of what I'm guessing, uh, or putting together that it's, that's the reason. Well, I, I would say, just to put my two cents worth then, since it's a state and they're uh, uh, freaking wolves, and to kill somebody, I would say the state is on the hook for that. Exactly. For See, that's, that's why I think they're not coming forward and saying that they're releasing them. But if you want to take this further, of course, in relation to kind of what we're talking about, you'll never get a definitive that these creatures, and I'm speaking just generically here, considering a lot of different creatures and cryptids, that there's anything like this in the woods across America. But it is, and they do know about it, whether you're talking about a game warden in Florida, Colorado, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, it doesn't matter. There's this secret or very highly confidential oath that they shall not acknowledge or mention anything like this because it would be uh, too large of a scale of an acknowledgement that because there's so many different I think personally they're responsible for missing persons I think yes. they're responsible for killing of livestock killing of personal animals and pets um, and, and so on and so forth 
and so if you don't acknowledge something, therefore, theoretically, it must not exist. So what would be the reasoning? I think it's probably a, a couple big reasons. I think, number one, they're told to not acknowledge it by higher-ups, uh, NSA, the NSS. Um, uh, it's kind of an interagency faction that are told at a federal level for them to basically, uh, you just need to call us and keep don't acknowledge anything. As soon as you hear anything, give us a call, kind of thing. So, Lance, Lance are those wolves protected in Oklahoma? Uh, not really. There's no season on them because theoretically, they don't exist. Yeah. So, 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 so if the farmer or somebody shot one, you wouldn't get in any trouble. No, sir. Okay. Right. No, sir, because there's no season out here. They're not supposed. There's no. There's no season because again, there is no. Uh, it's not like coyotes. Coyotes are in the hunting regulations as a predator, but there's really not a season on them. Uh, you can hunt them in wildlife management areas all you want, uh, and you can do it at night. But you have to let the game wardens know that it's you going to be in a particular area hunting them at night. And it's kind of a, you know, uh, a go pass, so to speak. But these creatures, these cryptids, they're never going to acknowledge that. The only time I've had someone, a game warden, acknowledge to an encounter victim was when the encounter victim, victim was in law enforcement. And he said, I will share with you, since you're in law enforcement and you had this encounter, We've known about them for a long time. Some are aggressive, some are not. But I, I wouldn't go telling, I wouldn't share your encounter with anyone. That's just between you and I. And that was told by a Texas game warden. Wow. That's heavy. And see, there well, was a Texas ranger sitting right with that Texas game warden and he basically told this local police officer of a small town, basically, you shall not talk about this. Do you understand? Kind of a uh, very much in your face to another officer. An ultimatum. Yes, sir. And it was a, it was kind of in a threat. He took it as a kind of a, uh, didn't specify a threat, but you can tell there was some implied threat to a certain degree, almost... Indir indirectly. Yes, sir. You know what? Since it's not the guy that was a law enforcement officer, I understand that they're worried about the, their pensions. That's right. I mean, with this one, and um, I can share another time, but basically, after this interview... There was two other people sitting during that that interrogation, if you will, and this is what this police officer told me. It was like an interrogation. There was two other people sitting at the table that never said a word. They were in suits, and they had this disdainful, disgusted, hateful, glaring eye look at him the whole time. Never said a word. It was only uh, who spoke to him and question him was the Texas game, uh, a Texas Ranger, and a Texas game warden. Did they ask them for their ID? No. Nope. There was a boo boo right there. He, he well, gave he it was, up anyway. He was. This officer was directed Monday morning to go into follow his superior. His superior said. Can you follow me? I, there's some guys that want to talk to you. And then uh, when you get done, you know, I'll give you the pass down for today. And he says, oh, okay. He had no idea where he was going and, you know, who he was talking to. And his supervisor directed him to a room with the Texas Ranger, uh, a Texas game warden. And they were sitting down. And then there was two other gentlemen at the same table. And so he sits down and the Texas Ranger was the one that spoke the most. And then the Texas Game Warden said, you know, during this conversation of uh, 
directness and questioning. He just said, we've known about them a long time. Uh, we just don't acknowledge it to the public. But since you're a police officer, you've had this experience, it would behoove you to just say nothing. It was, ex it, it was terrifying. Uh, him and his dad were fishing, and he had to shoot one in the chest. It was pissed off. It was climbing up an embankment, and it was at night. His dad was in the truck. He was already frightened because they could hear it climbing this, this dirt embankment, and he actually could feel the tremors on the, on the cliff that they were standing on fishing in the water, and their lines were just off in this blackness in this river, but they could hear this thing jump in the water, wade across. It was grunting, growling just this most deep guttural pissed off sound and he heard this thing climbing up this dirt embankment just clawing up and he backed up and since he's an he was an officer he always carries his piece with him and it was about 15 yards away when it came over the embankment pushing itself up and man I'm just getting chills talking about this uh, one again um, <coughs> He said, Lance, as God is my witness, from shoulder tip to shoulder tip on the outer shoulders, it was five feet across. Wow. And its head would make about one, about the width would be three of my heads as far as the width of this neck and head. Yeah. And it was, I know what he says. And it was screaming. As it came over, pushing itself, it was trying to pull itself up. He said, Lance, I, I, just my reflexes, as soon as it was trying, I could tell we were in no position to win. So as soon as it was pulling up, its uh, upper torso was coming over. I shot it in the chest twice. And I could see blood splatter, and it fell back. I heard it hit the water. Uh, I grabbed my poles, I grabbed everything, I just, I just scooped up everything, threw it in the back of my little truck, my dad had the car started already, and we just drove off as fast as I could. That was on a weekend, and by Monday I was called in to that room to talk to those guys, and I was led by my superior. Wow. Do you know what kind of weapon he, this guy had? I believe it was a... I'll have to go back and listen because I do have the raw audio. But something tells me just off the, off the cuff from my memory, it was a 45... I think it was a revolver. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And he just... And... Um, the Texas Ranger asked him, he says, well, what were you doing carrying your revolver? And then the officer was a little pissed. He said, well, you're an officer. Don't you carry when you're off work too? He said, well, yes. He goes, well, I do too. He said, the Texas Ranger said, well, were you hunting this? He goes, I was not hunting anything. I was fishing with my father. I didn't this ask. This is right. I this is right. Yeah. He said, I didn't ask to see this damn thing. I'm scared to death of it. I thought it, it had I let it come over the cliff, it would have killed us. We I was in this little truck with my father who's elderly and disabled. There's no way in hell we would have survived. It was mad for whatever reason. It wasn't going to let us go. I could tell it was going to do something. I, it was a very, very bad place to be in. And I, I had no option. So he dropped it in the water. He dropped it in the water. He had just boom, boom. Two shots. He said, it's, a, it's like everything was in slow motion, Lance. My, my instinct kicked in. I shot. I hit it right in the chest. I could see blood. It's like slow motion. Uh, I could see blood just splatter outward. Uh. And it just, it fell back. And I heard just a a splash, and he said, uh, the ranger asked him, he said, well, did you take a look? He said, hell no. 
I, it, it fell back in the dark and I heard it hit the water. I didn't, I was not going to see if it was still alive or dead. I, we got out of there. He said, I can show you where it's at. And the ranger said, no, 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 we'll go. We know what you're talking about. So how did they know where he was talking about had they not had issues there before possibly is what I wanted. That's to right. I agree. And I told that guy that and he goes, you know, I didn't even think about that, Lance. He said, I didn't share with them what I had been seeing at another location where I was fishing on that same river. And, Whoa. and I said, well, he said, I actually had a female Bigfoot came out to, to visit me. And when I say visit, come out and completely show herself broad daylight. And he said, maybe a dozen times I would go to this favorite fishing hole where I went and I caught a lot of fish. Well, I was leaving her fish on the bank. So when I would go, just about every time I would see her, she would, I would just kind of wait a while and then she would come out and I would leave some fish. She would never walk close, close, but it was close. She was close enough that I could see all of her. She was, he said she was probably a little over six feet tall. She had breast, and she was by herself, and so I would leave her some fish, I would back away, and then I would leave. And so I didn't tell them about that sighting at a different location, uh, I just kept that to myself. Wow. That's good that he did that. Yes. He said I didn't want any harm to come to her, I, I didn't yeah. know what she was, but I figured that she was this Sasquatch and I, I, un, I realized it wasn't a human in a costume. I didn't see anyone else around like her family. So I, I just gave her fish that every time I caught extra, I'd give her fish and I would go to this one location. I guess no one else was going to this place and she would kind of appear. And so she, huh. she would stay in this area, I guess, or lived in that area. Well, he spoiled her, is what he did. Yeah. And so I bring that story up because the game wardens know, regardless of what they say, they know about these, not only just Bigfoot, they know about other creatures that are out there. Whether they've seen them or not, they do talk amongst each other. They're out they there, and they are told to call a number, um, either tell their superior and the superior will call a number and then these fed guys come out and it is my belief that these federal people live in all 50 states. Yes, I believe that. And that that's how they can be on a location within a matter of an hour or less is because they're across the corners of each state. They have access, their access is unlimited to military help to helicopters, uh, special helicopters, uh, yeah. to close off roads. Anything they want, they get. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, I never see no helicopters, but I think these things are militarized. They got chips in them, I, and they're militarized. You, you know, I, it, nothing would surprise me at this point. Nothing would surprise me. We could easily have the logical side of us say, no, surely not. But as much as I've heard from good people of sound mind as yourself, it would not surprise me in the least if it went even deeper than that. Yes. And the reason why I say that, Lance, is because why else... Would the feds be there if they weren't militarized? Well, exactly. And if they were just an animal in, you know, uh, a wild prehistoric animal that's yet to be discovered, why would the, at a federal level, be interested in this? Mm. It's because they're not an animal. They yes. are a being type, whether they're extraterrestrial or, or terrestrial, it doesn't matter. They yeah. have some level of cognitive thinking and awareness, a, 
a, a level of awareness of consciousness, they have communication abilities. Uh, not exactly like humans, of course, but they ha they can communicate, they can hunt, they obviously can reproduce, they know how to fend for themselves in the wild, kind of nomadically, and that, because of their strength, their size, and their abilities, this is why the federal government is highly involved. What else could there be? I, 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 that's just it. It couldn't. I, I, I don't know what else. They, it's, you know, it's not can a. Can I say something? Yes, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No, but go ahead. Joseph Stalin tried to create a superhuman, but his scientists didn't have the technology back then. He failed, but he tried it. Uh, we have the technology today to do any damn thing, but it's hidden from us. I believe that. I totally believe it. Uh -huh. Now, uh, if I may proceed. Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, when I went into that valley off that railroad bed, the thing would stop screaming. Uh, it, and I would do my hunting. Never got nothing there. Well, Years and years before that, I did, but uh, uh, these trees are being pushed down in the back of me, where I sat. And some of these trees were so heavy, you could hear the ground shaking. No vocalizations whatsoever. So I would move maybe 150 yards away, and more, more trees would be crashing down. I said, this is still stupid and naive that I was. So, I I go up to like uh, maybe half a mile more and I hear this bang, bang, bang and I'm thinking, what fool would be in the woods banging a no trespassing sign but it was open land, it, it didn't matter. Uh, would it be bang on a freaking tree doing a no trespass passing sign. That's what I thought. So uh, I'm listening and I hear more banging from another direction. And I'm thinking, if I run into this son of a bitch, I'm going to give him a horizontal butt stroke with my freaking weapon. You know? Right, right. And, uh, but I can never find anything. And, but they're tapping back and forth. Bang, bang, bang. Still being stupid and naive. Uh, so I go up to the top of the mountain now, where that logging road is, right? Right. So I'm sitting on that tree stump that I used to always sit on. And uh, the tree's getting pushed down and back at me. Again. And I think, wait a minute. This is just this is just too screwed up. This, this It just can't happen. It's just too screwed up. 